Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. And welcome to the latest edition of the DCEU Daily. On today's DCEU Daily, later on, we'll be reading the second DC article, the second DC hit piece from Variety in the space of two weeks. And you're going to need a trigger warning before I read it because it's full of so much bullshit. Basically, it's a little bit of fact and a lot of fiction in it. I will educate you about this article and about this publication and their connection with former Warner Brothers Pictures chair, Toby Emmerich, one of the most corrupt people in the industry. We'll get into it a little bit later on. But let's talk, first of all, about our darling, Grace Randolph, who isn't happy, who can't sleep at night unless she's upsetting some fandom. So for some reason at the moment, Grace Randolph is in a war, an all-out war, with Snyderverse fans. I don't know why. I don't know how this started. But anyway, she threw a huge grenade on the internet yesterday. She claimed, her sources are telling her, that Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios are looking for a role for Henry Cavill within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So is this true or false? Probably it's false. Probably it's bullshit. Probably she's lying. But there's a little chance she could be telling the truth. I don't think she is. How do I feel about Henry Cavill potentially joining the MCU? Well, first of all, this is a rumour that's been going on for many, many years. Shiel Media, like the people at Screen Rant, have been writing about this for years. They really, really want Henry Cavill as part of the MCU so they can kind of mock us DC fans. So he's been a fan cast for MCU fans for a long time as well. Henry Cavill is a very, very popular actor. If this is true, and let's pretend Grace Randolph is a reputable journalist for about five seconds. I don't care anymore. This would have triggered me many years ago, and it should never have triggered me. Any working actor is free to choose any franchise and any role he chooses, right? Because he's a working actor, and he can do whatever he wants, and I, should, I and you shouldn't be upset about that. I can understand why you would be hurt about this. You want him back full-time in the DC Extended Universe, he hasn't been part of the DC Extended Universe since 2017's Justice League, right? And he could be coming back in cameos. He could have done something for Black Adam. Who knows at this stage? But if the DCEU is being ended, rebooted, then he won't be Superman for very long. Right now, Henry Cavill's very busy shooting The Witcher Season 3. Then he goes straight over to my man Chad, who directed and who has written the excellent John Wick franchise. They'll be doing a Highlander reboot movie together. I'm a big Highlander fan. Love the movies with Christopher Lambert. Love the series with Adrian Paul. And I look forward to what Chad and Henry can bring to us. But yeah, I'm not really triggered about this. I don't care about this. It's ironic that Grace Randolph is the one talking about this. This woman has been so disrespectful to Henry Cavill from the moment he was cast in Man of Steel. He's not a good actor. He's not a great Superman. He's a diva. He wants too much money. The woman is a disgrace, right? You should be kissing his backside, Grace. As I say, Grace is a disgrace. She is a trigger merchant. That's how she's become popular. She used to be respectable. She isn't respectable anymore. Grace, you are lying. Henry Cavill is not joining the MCU. That's what I believe. But if Henry Cavill is going to join the MCU, good luck, my friend. Go off with a handshake. As I say, he hasn't worked in the DCEU for many years. He's tried and he's tried. He even pitched a movie with the Mission Impossible Fallout director, Superman movie, which WB and Emmerich basically rejected. Rejected the pitch. Henry has tried everything to return as Superman. So if he doesn't, and in the rumours about him doing this cameo in Black Adam are not true, and he doesn't return at all, right, then it's not his fault. It's their fault. He's tried everything. So he has every right to be in the MCU. Don't get me wrong. 
I won't be happy when it happens. I won't enjoy being mocked by MCU and Marvel stands and these shill fucking media lot like Screen Rant and IGN. I won't like it at all. It will hurt, but there's nothing I can do about it. It is what it is. I, I will just ignore it. And I will hope, beyond hope, that David Zaslav, you know, sorts DC out and brings someone on board, whether that's Dan Lin or not. Because that's not certain. I think that news that he's in talks with WB to take the DC Studios president job, basically I think he's in talks. He's being interviewed. But he's not. he hasn't sealed the deal yet. It might not be him as well because he was caught on a podcast calling Snyderverse fans bots. So that's not really a good start, is it, Dan? I know it's an old podcast, but someone found that. And I wonder who did that. Probably one of his competitors for the job. So it'll be very, very interesting if Dan Lin still gets the job. But going back to Henry Cavill, right? Of course, he's a great Sid man. We want him to do Man of Steel 2 free. And I'm a Justice League. We want him to be so busy with the DCEU, he can't join the MCU. But if he does, good luck, Henry. Just don't expect me to consume your movies. Trigger, trigger, trigger warning, trigger warning. It's another variety hit piece. Let's go, everyone. This is the latest DC article hit piece from Variety by Adam B. Vary and Brent Lang. Right, let me explain to you about Variety. Variety are connected to Toby Emmerich, the former WB Pictures chair. He uses them to spread their hate and propaganda and sometimes try and fix the problems he created within the DCEU and WB. He's no longer the chair of WB Pictures. Basically, Mike DeLuca and Pam Adby have taken his job. He's trying to make sure that all the projects he greenlit, even though he's not there anymore, get released. And he's very angry that Batgirl's been cancelled because he's already lost one bonus. It's about bonuses. Why do you think they rushed Justice League and didn't allow Joss to at least reboot the DCEU and do his own DCEU from the very beginning, from what which is what they should have done, because Joss is a talented guy, whether you like him or not, and he could have made a great DC Extended Universe in his own image. But that's why they rushed Joss, and that's why Joss was under pressure, and he and the actors fell out. It was Emmerich's fault. And, you know, and the investors and the shareholders over at WB. Anyway, let's read this article. As I say, it is a trigger warning, so let's go. From Bad Girl Fallout to rebooting Superman... All the landmines facing the next DC chief. On its face, finding the excuse me, yeah, on its face, finding the next Kevin Feige to oversee Warner Brothers Discovery's film and TV adaptions of DC Comics is a bit like declaring you only want to make hits if only wishing could make it so. Fage Rain as the Chief Creative Officer of Marvel Studios, overseeing the singular Marvel Cinematic Universe for films since 2006 and for streaming TV since 2018, has earned Disney upwards of $25 billion in the global box office. Grosses to date and help drive Disney Plus to more than 152 million subscribers, even though the MCU on Disney Plus is a load of shit. Anyway, worldwide, of course, WBD and CEO David Zaslav wants to emulate that success. Dan Lin, the producer of The Lego Batman, has emerged as one possible DC chief, as has Emma Watts, a veteran executive with stints at Paramount and 20th Century Fox. Both are well respected with deep connections throughout Hollywood. Right, Emma Watts, even though they keep on mentioning her, is past tense. That isn't going to happen. But Dan Lin, neither may never happen either, because at the moment, he hasn't been announced as the DC president of DC Studios. So be very, very careful. I think the Hollywood Reporter jumped the gun last week. They must have got some information. I'm sure Warner Brothers Discovery and Zaslav and Alan Horn are not happy about it getting out. But Fag charted a singular path to becoming the most successful creative executive in Hollywood. Now, just because he's the most creative executive in Hollywood, it doesn't mean the content he's made is better than the stuff we grew up with, because it's not. He doesn't make proper movies. It's just something to chew on until the flavour runs out. Hollywood that afforded him the time, patience and great good fortune to build the MCU more or less from the ground up and on his terms. 
whoever takes the equivalent of the fade job at DC will, by contrast, inherit a Justice League size series of preconditions, entrenched systems and PR migraines on top of the stupendous task of building a slate of film and TV titles that could equal the MCU. Here are a few of the challenges ahead. Now, as I say, I will stop and explain everything to you so we, there's no misunderstandings. Dealing with the fallout from the Batgirl cancellation. Cancelling Batgirl may have made sense from a dollars and cents perspective. Zaslav is committed to making streaming movies for a price. Right. He's not committed to streaming movies. He's committed to television series and documentaries by merging Discovery Plus and HBO Max. But he wants to take movies back to the theatrical system. Now, he may make movies to sell to other companies. That's a good idea. Additionally, to the cinematic stuff that he's going to be doing for WB. And that's good. No problem. And Batgirl, with its 90 million budget, was thought too expensive to fit nicely into the mould. The film also, sources say, wasn't in good enough shape to justify the $50 million needed to market and release it in theatres. So now Zaslav gets a tax write-off successful comic book universes, however, aren't run by accountants. You need great filmmakers, visionary writers and talented stars. Right. He's only just begun. He's trying to put all this together. So you can't label this at him straight away. There's a merger. Money has to be brought back into the company because of the merger. It happens throughout mergers. And he needs to sort out this shit show of a studio. We continue. That's a group that may not be feeling so hot about all things Warner Brothers Discovery to thrive the next DC chief. To thrive, to find the next DC chief, will need to restore relationships with talent, talent who fear the next project could go the way of Batgirl and get rudely jettisoned. So this mindset that just because he's cancelled one movie and some animated series, he's going to cancel everyone's movies. That's the only movie that's been canned by the way, so again, this is propaganda. This is a propaganda piece like their last piece after the Hollywood Reporter did a really, really good informative piece via Boris Kitt. Anyway, newly minted Warner Brothers Pictures Chiefs Michael DeLuca and Pamela Adby have been working to ameliorate the situation, possibly by finding a new project for Batgirl star Leslie Grace and the film's directors Bill Falar and Adu Arby. Now, the truth is, the fallout is finished. Um, Twitter's very quiet about it now, because these people never stay angry about the same thing for long. All this is irrelevant. He cancelled the movie. He made the right decision. Don't worry about it, whether Leslie Grace is back as Batgirl in a DCE, you're in a new DC universe. I don't really care. I hope she get, has a long, thriving career. But my priority is DC. However, trust with the wider talent community has been broken. No, it hasn't. It's one cancellation. Nobody gives a shit. Repairing it will take a lot longer than breaking it did. Again, this is just all propaganda to try and tell you that Warner Brothers Discovery and David Zaslav are a shit show. No, the people that they're working for and doing this article for, Toby Emmerich, broke Warner Brothers. David Zaslav is attempting to fix Warner Brothers. Right. Okay, deep breath. The only DC movie that currently has a green light post-merger is Joker. That is a lie. So we went through this last time. They tried to claim last time and they created a, a bonfire on Twitter that the Batman 2 wasn't green lit. We know the Batman 2 is green lit. We heard about Matt Reeves' new first look deal with WB and the Batman 2 is happening. So, merger is Joker, folly or do. Todd Phillips follow up to his billion dollar grossing Oscar winning sensation starring uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. Matt Reeves meanwhile is currently working on a sequel to his 2022 blockbuster The Batman with Robert Pattinson which hasn't officially been green lit, lit yet. Right. I don't know what they're alluding to but it doesn't matter if it has, hasn't been officially green lit or been green lit. You've got to ignore that. Bat stands, don't worry about it. Matt Reeves is 100% with Warner Brothers Discovery. The Batman sequel has happened, uh, is happening. They're going to make it. He'll write it with Matt Lynn Tomlin, a great writer. Um, it's it's going to happen, right? We know it's going to happen, so ignore all of this. But who are we kidding? 
It could be a slice of life drama about Bruce Wayne's trip to the Gotham Home Goods, and it would likely get made as well as a spin off TV series centering on Colin Farrell's The Penguin, written by Lauren LaFranc. Reeves is also developing another spin off set in the world of Arkham Asylum, but that is further off. Then there's the second season of Peacemaker from writer director James Gunn, which Gunn says is still moving forward. Now, James is not going to lie, is he, is he variety? So that's definitely happening. I trust James Gunn. The future of the animated series Harley Quinn and live action shows Titans and Doom Patrol, all premiering new seasons this year on HBO Max, are less clear. I don't care. I don't care about Titans and I don't care about Harley Quinn. Not a problem to me. As is what's to become of Constantine and Madame Zandu shows currently in development at J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot. Well, a lot of people are saying they're still happening. I don't think Abrams is going to continue being a thing over on at Warner Brothers Discovery. You know, I've repeatedly said this to you, that Zaslav is really, really angry with Abrams. He's been there for three years. He's got a non-exclusive, really high-paid job over at WB. And he's been sitting on his backside with his fingers up his backside for three years. And Zaslav is not happy. Now, I don't mean to be disrespectful to JJ because I have a lot of respect for the man creatively in terms of Alias and Lost and Fringe. The man's a fucking genius. Star Trek 2009, one of my favourite movies, right? But he has his issues, as we know. If I was a betting man, I think that he won't be doing these shows or these shows will be delayed or maybe he'll appoint showrunners to them. If he stays, I think he's trying to negotiate a new agreement, an exclusive agreement with David Zaslav if he's going to stay, if he stays. I have a feeling David Zaslav may be talking to him about writing and directing his own Superman. Maybe JJ wants to go back to Superman Flyby. Now, we've spoken about that film before. I like it. It's really, really different. It has parallels to Man of Steel, but it also has a Krypton that isn't destroyed. And at the end of the movie, Superman goes back to Krypton in a cliffhanger, right? Setting up a sequel. I actually like that idea. We will see. Some of these titles, interle whatever that says, interrelate that but by design, none of them are part of a singular DC cinematic universe, especially Joker 2 and the Batman 2, which and eight, sorry, which each exists in their own wholly separate narrative realms. Zaslev, however, has made plain that he wants his own MCU for DC. Ironically, that was what the current head of DC, fi DC Films Unit, Walter Hamada, wait for the propaganda, which, it, which proves that this is Toby Emmerich propaganda was attempting to execute by harnessing the expansive possibilities of the multiverse in a movie that was meant to hit the reset button for DC's big screen storytelling. That movie, alas, stars Ezra Miller. Figuring out what to do with The Flash. In the August the 4th earnings call for Warner Brothers Discovery, Zaslav indicated that he still planned on moving forward with releasing The Flash, into theatres, despite repeated alarming headlines about allegedly abusive behaviour by Miller, which to be clear started in April 2020, months before The Flash ever started. Now, if you are a Toby Emmerich propaganda piece, let me remind you, who was in charge when he created, when Ezra Miller, not he, apologies Ezra, even though you're an alleged criminal, I will um, represent you in the right way. That. So just remember who was in charge of Warner Brothers, Dis uh, sorry, say that again. Um, I'm getting my words mixed up, but let's just remember who was in charge of WB Pictures and who was the chair of that group. It was Toby Emmerich. So Toby Emmerich could have made sure that Ezra Miller wasn't playing the flashback after 2020 when he allegedly throttled, throttled a young lady in Iceland has since released an apology for my, so that's, yeah, Miller has since released an apology for my past behaviour and says that they are seeking ongoing treatment for complex mental health issues. While that statement temporarily calmed the tempest surrounding the star, it's not certain that clear skies are on the horizon. I don't think they are. I think this movie could still go the way of the dodo. At the very least, it means that Miller's off-screen issues may mean he won't be part of the Flash promotional rollout and that the rest of the cast and creative team will be left fielding, fielding difficult questions about the star instead. 
of you know hawking the big brassy and escapist flick about the scarlet speedster i think the whole point of them making him apologize is so he can be part of the marketing so if he doesn't do anything else this movie will happen and he'll be part of the marketing and they'll be ordered not to ask questions about his misdemeanors and that's an issue because the flash which every exec who has seen it will tell you is really good is intending well yeah and uh, toby emmerich has told you it's really good and he wants his bonus for it so you're going to tell us it's really good i've seen a test screening you know what i think about it is intended to clean up all the narr narrative threads left dangling by the dceu stop and start approach to the cinematic universe building the film is using time travel and the multiverse to reset the dc timeline from what had been starting with 2013's man of steel and set it on a new course. If the film does come out, however, will that plan even hold, or will it be a kind of swan song before an even, hard, even harder reset button is hit? I don't think that the Flash movie is going to set up a multiverse strategy. If they haven't made changes by the reshoots they did in the summer, there'll be more reshoots to change that course. A, they'll just release the movie, stays in the Snyder timeline, they release all these movies, and then what happens is they start again with a brand new DC universe or they try and fix the DCEU. Who knows? Which would have which would have to wait anyway because The Flash is no longer the last film of the old DC regime currently on the WB slate. Figuring out what to do after The Flash and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. The Flash was intended to usher in a whole new era for the DCEU. But now Aquaman 2, which was originally intended to predate that film is coming after it. It's possible that there could be some Aquaman 2 related concessions to the cinematic timeline adjustments, but there may be some ongoing tweaking. Michael Keaton was originally supposed to show up as Batman at the end of Aquaman 2, following up on the character's return in The Flash. But now that Ben Affleck is also slated to appear in the Atlantis set adventure, that may be one former Batman too many. So we've been talking about, in previous videos, what a clusterfuck the DCEU is. And who's in the Aquaman sequel? Is it Michael Keaton? Is it Ben Affleck? Is it both of them? What a fucking mess. However that is, resol however that is resolved, the new DC chief needs to find a new way to revive Superman. There are already several schools of thought there. there. One is uh, to simply bring back Henry Cavill as the Man of Steel. Another would be to move forward with J.J. Abrams' produced film that was supposed to have a script by Tanashi Coates. Well, that's not happening, and I told you that ages ago, and would have reportedly been the first to feature a black Superman. Option three is to start from scratch, which is my preferred option, or proceed with both the Abrams, Coates, and Cavill versions of Soups at the same time. That would be a fucking disaster, wouldn't it? Who knows? Then there's a dis where are we? Then there's a desire to get a third Wonder Woman project going after the second one, spurted out with critics. Presumably that would involve having Gal Gadot once again wield the lasso of truth. That's to say nothing of plans to get films featuring Green Lantern, Green Arrow, Martian Manhunter, and a panoply of other Justice Leagues going. So he reckons, right? The, these journalists actually reckon that that they've got you know they had original they've got plans for Green Arrow for Martian Manhunter and so many other Justice League characters. Is this true? We'll have to wait and see. Or are they just chucking stuff out? You never know with Variety. They did this two weeks ago. I'm not sure they really know anything because the only information they have is from Toby Emery. Well, he's got his plans are gone. It's a new plan, it's a new leadership, and this is why Variety know jack shit. Navigating established firm uh, fire forms at Warner Brothers, HBO Max and WBTV. At Disney, Fage runs Marvel Studios as a fully separate unit from the rest of the company. By contrast, anything released under the Warner Brothers Pictures banner has traditionally gone through the office of the studio chief, which recently became occupied by DeLuca and Adby taking over for Toby Emmerich, your friend. Ditto for HBO Max and HBO Max headed by Casey Bloys and Warner Brothers Television run by Channing Dungy. That means that the new DC chief likely won't have the kind of broad authority that Fade enjoys. Eh, wrong, ask again, give me another answer because you're talking shit, sorry.
you're lying because we read the Hollywood Reporter from Boris, the Hollywood Reporter article from Boris Kitt last week. Do you remember? Do you remember? How good's your memory? Do you remember what Boris said? Boris said that the only person that the new DC um, Studios president would report to is David Zasler. So you're lying. You're saying that to cause problems, to put obstructions in the way. So if Dan Lin takes over DC Studios, for example, the only person he reports to is Zasla, which means he would be in charge of his DC Studios, which is a good move. So they are talking bullshit. We continue. Instead, and that person will have to be adept at navigating the egos and ambitions of other executives. Wrong, you're lying, because you won't have to talk to those people whose interests may not always align. That could require nearly superhuman ability. Well, what you're talking about is bullshit, because we know that's not the case going forward anyway. Winning over fans. Privately, studio insiders have lamented that Zack Snyder's Justice League never should have happened, rather than quietly unceasing online campaign to release the Snyder Cut, the four-hour HBO Max feature only further entrenched a vocal and extremely online Snyderverse fan base in op opposition to the leadership at the studio in, in general and at DC in particular. So, let's go through this again so there's no misunderstandings. And I'll explain it to you because I know a lot of you are upset about this. Privately, studio, is insi studio insiders have lamented that Zack Snyder's Justice League never should have happened right. Who are these studio insiders? Well, I'll tell you. Jeff Johns, Toby Emmerich, and Walter Hamada. They're not the people working at Warner Brothers Discovery now. This is not a David Zaslav opinion. This is not a Warner Brothers Discovery opinion. It's the old Ray James opinions. This is what this article is. It's a hit piece. So if you're worried that the current Warner Brothers hate you and hate the Snyderverse, they don't. We don't know their opinion on the Snyderverse, but we know that what they're saying here, that the, the Snyder Cut should never have been released, and I'm so happy it was, because one of the greatest movies ever fucking made, in terms of CBMs as well. So they're talking from the minds of the, uh, you know, the past leadership of WB Pictures. Of course they're fucking bitter. They never wanted the Snyderverse to be restored. They never wanted the Snyder Cut to be released because the Snyder Cut exposes their mistakes. They basically kicked out a guy who made one of the best CBMs of all time. Not just the Snyder Cut, BVS and Man of Steel. This exposed them and then once it was greenlit to be released, Snyder and Fisher exposed the studio even more and started a bigger civil war. Because Warner Brothers Pictures and Toby Emmerich and Walter Hamada didn't green light the Snyder Cut to be released. That was John Stankey of AT&T. And oh boy, these people are not happy. But what these people think and say is irrelevant. Rather than quite the unceasing online campaign to release the Snyder Cut. But Mr. Emmerich and Variety, you were never going to quiet us down. You were never going to stop us hashtagging release the Snyder Cut. We were never going to stop till it was going to be released. And we'll never stop hashtagging restore the Snyderverse until we're told it's not going to happen. The four-hour HBO Max feature only further entrenched the vocal and extremely online Snyderverse fan base in opposition to the leadership at the studio in general and at DC in particular. Of course, you wanted us to be quiet down, and we weren't. That group may be hard to win over, but DC has to do a better job of cultivating the kind of compelling franchises that will enable them to build up the kind of passionate, engaged, excited fan base that can, can, that can drown out the haters. Yeah, in other words, what he's saying is, what they're saying is in this article, if they create a really good franchise, then we, the Snyderverse fans, because I'm a DC fan in general, I just want to see good DC, but they want to drown out the Restore the Snyderverse campaign. The haters. Basically, Variety are calling the Snyderverse fans, Restore the Snyderverse fans, haters. Because this is a Toby Emmerich forwarded hit piece, and it doesn't work. This is the snarky reporting we heard from The Hollywood Reporter. 
The Hollywood Reporter mentioned like these journalists who are really, really snarky. Variety are connected to the old leadership of WB and what they say is nothing. That takes patience, which has often been a short supply by your friend Toby Emrick at DC, where corporate overlords like Toby Emrick have long made it clear that they want their own in-house rival to the MCU, but have failed to understand the kind of blood, sweat and tears it can take to build that kind of juggernaut. It's actually really funny, because that's the only true thing these journalists said at the end. Their laziness has brought us to this. The laziness of Kevin Sujihara going, Oh, Christopher Nolan, I love the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, can you do us a really good franchise for DC? Uh, okay, but I'm not going to run it. No, Kevin, uh, we're bringing Zack Snyder. You know the guy who did Watchmen and made that divisive movie? I love Zack, by the way. I'm just, I'm just speaking how it is, right? Uh, you know that guy who did that really controversial movie, Watchmen, right? Yeah, well, get him to run the DCEU. It'll be fine, don't worry. I'll, I'll shepherd it, but I won't have much to do with it, apart from, you know, co-writing the story with David Goyer of Man of Steel. It'll be fine, don't worry. And from that moment on, whether you like Zack or not, these are the fucking facts. None of this should have happened. Because someone like Bruce Timm, in 2011, when they were developing the first Superman film, Man of Steel, should have come in. Bruce Timm did a, has done an excellent job with animation. He knows the comics. He knows what should be done. It should have been him. Maybe him and Zack Snyder would have been a great team. I don't know. But what they did was wrong. And this is where they are now. And they keep on trying to dig themselves out of hole and a hole and a hole. Look at this situation. The Hollywood Reporter leak that Dan Lin could be the new DC Studios president. Hours later, a video is shown of him basically being disrespectful to Snyderverse fans. I'll doubt now that he gets the job, but we'll have to wait and see about that. I keep on hearing a lot that we're going to do a Kevin Feige and we're going to have our own Kevin Feige. You know what I want as a DC fan? And if you're honest with yourselves, you know what you want. I just want to see great DC movies. I want to see great TV shows. And if they're all connected together as, as some part of franchise, that's great. But I'm also happy with having an individual kind of franchise. You see a movie, it's great, it's great art, it represents those DC characters and that DC universe beautifully. Like Superman the movie and Batman 89, they're not connected, but they're two of the best DC movies ever made. Uh, Batman versus Superman and the Joker movie, I love them. Both great pieces of art. It doesn't all have to be connected. We don't need a Kevin Feige, although that's kind of the description of someone running the whole department. And I understand that, but stop mentioning that fucking person's name. We need a competent leader who leads this brand new DC Studios into the next decade, this 10 year plan. They're talking about a 10 year plan, but do they actually have a plan? Clearly, they haven't got any plan yet. They're looking for someone to head this thing up. Is it Dan Lin? Maybe, maybe not. But whoever it is has to respect the fans, whether it's Snyder fans, whether it's DC fans in general, there cannot be any divide. And seeing an interview, you know, a podcast with Dan Lin basically joking around and calling Snyder fans bots, it doesn't mean he's disrespecting the fans. It doesn't mean he actually thinks Snyderverse fans are bots. But it doesn't look good. So I don't know if he's still going to get that job. But we need someone competent, everyone. It's a mess. We're all asking what they're going to do. Keep the Snyderverse, get rid of the Snyderverse, stick with the DCEU or do something new. Nobody knows. I'm 49 years old. I'd like to know before I'm 60 that what their plans are, what they're going to do. I'd like to see a Superman film before I'm 60. Because I'm getting on. Will I even make 60? I hope so. Because everyone, whether you're a TC fan or whether you support Manchester United or whatever in the world, whatever you're a fan of, you want it to be the best fucking thing ever. And you want everyone else from other fandoms and in the media to say this is the best thing ever. And we haven't had that. And it's been hard seeing the MCU being so fucking successful. 
So please, Mr. Zaslav and Warner Brothers Discovery, make this decision. Find the right person to lead DC Studios, then announce a slate and get us all excited. Release these remaining DCEU movies and let's move on to something better. Something that embraces all the fans. This has been the DCEU Daily with me, Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wives. I'm here on Movies TV Mad every single day, you lucky people. So until we see each other again, goodbye, au revoir, auf Wiedersehen.